Hello, everybody. Welcome to part four of the Hathor material. I believe it's part four. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the Pyramid of Balance and the Ascending Spiral. Now, as most of you know, I am re reading this live for the very first time. This is my first reaction. And from what I can see, I'm really glad we're going to be talking about the pyramid because as you guys know, if you've been on here on this channel for a while, the darkness cannot create anything, only the light can. So even pyramids that we have seen that have been used and utilized by the bad guys were actually originally created for us to understand our own spirituality and so i'm really glad that they're going to get into this so hopefully this will start to clarify some of the things we need clarifying uh with before we head into a new timeline so that we don't make the mistakes and go vigilante on stuff that's actually supposed to be for the good so we're going to start with chapter five the pyramid of balance and on my book this is page 61. Imagine a square-based pyramid with a pinnacle, the capstone of the pyramid, as a symbol of the height of consciousness to which you can evolve like the one shown below. So the pinnacle being the very tip top, and there is the base. Notice that the four corners at the base support each pinnacle. Each of these corners represents an aspect crucial to achieving a balanced height higher state of awareness in our understanding and experience it is crucial that your foundation be secure and that the four cornered base be stable the four points or aspects of this stability are the cornerstones of your existence here these four cornerstones are one your relationship to your physical body as well as your other subtle bodies including your ka two your relationship with yourself and others three your relationship to the service you give to the universe, to the world, and to your community, which often takes the form of a career, though not always or exclusively. And four, your conscious relationship with the sacred elements that make up the world in which you live. The sacred elements are earth, fire, water, and air, and space. We have already discussed the relationship between your physical and your subtle body energies, as well as the importance of building a strong ka. It is vital to secure your physical relationship to your physical body and your other subtle bodies because as you move upward to higher levels of consciousness, you will be hindered if your physical body cannot sustain or hold the increase in energy. So this is another reason why physical exercise is imperative, mandatory for a spiritual practice. It's not just giving you the resistance of the ego to show you information, but you do have to be physically strong to be able to take on a higher vibration of energy, right? It's like you look at if you've got like a really intense substance inside of a jar, you have to have a very durable jar to hold the higher intense subject or liquid or whatever it's in it, if, if that makes sense. We even talk about that in Ashtanga Yoga. Like the first series of Ashtanga Yoga is uh, Yoga Chikitsa, which is physical therapy. You have to have the physical therapy. You have to have the heightened um, athleticism and the fitness of the body in order to then go into Nadi Shodna, which is nerve therapy. And they won't even teach you pranayama or any of these highly spiritual mystical practices until you've completed Nadi Shodna because the body has to be ready physically ready to take the high impact of the vibration spiritually i hope that makes sense you will not be able to remain in heightened states because your body will bring you back thus one of the four foundations of ascension requires that your ka and all your bodies including your physical body be strong and vibrant so if you think you can just be fat and lazy and be spiritual you got another thing coming the second foundation is to know yourself and to interact harmoniously with others whenever possible. Regarding your relationship with other people, you might like to know that in the ancient mystery schools of Egypt, especially the Egyptian mystery, mystery schools of Hathor, one that was not usually admitted to these schools until one passed through certain periods of life experience. When people presented themselves for entrance into these schools, everything was looked at including their relationships. For if human relationships were not established in a certain positive way, those relationships became an impediment, impediment and the initiate would actually fall back down into lower energy states and frequencies. 
Hence why we're doing a lot of the personal exercises on our own traumas, especially regarding other people in the 30 day challenge right now. Today on earth, some people believe that relationships are superbious, that they are not really needed, and that the positive interaction and relationship with other human beings can be bypassed. From our understanding, this belief is an error. What is required is to relate to other human beings in a clear, honest fashion. And it is important for you to be truthful about your experiences and forthcoming about your needs and desires. As your consciousness expresses itself through relationships, you are given a powerful mirror that reflects back to you your own unresolved issues. Ding, 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 ding. So we've talked about that. Everything that pisses you off about someone else are actually aspects of yourself that piss you off about you. On the flip side, things that you love about people are also things that you love about yourself. And that's what they're saying here. So let's read that again. As your consciousness expresses itself through relationships, you are given a powerful mirror that reflects back to you your un, your own unresolved issues. It is easy to delude yourself into believing that you have attained a certain level of awareness and compassion when you do not interact with other human beings. But as soon as you choose to interact, if you are honest and clearly aware, those places in yourself that are not loving and not compassionate will come clearly into your awareness. Why? The other person or persons will rub you the wrong way. So relating to others can create friction and a considerable discomfort, even pain. So that friction, again, they're saying is necessary to see where your unresolved issues are. It is our observation that most humans avoid these types of uncomfortable situations by abandoning themselves emotionally by not speaking their truth and by hiding their true intentions from both themselves and others. Then, in that moment of opportunity, where awareness could have become crystalline and clear, it becomes muddied and unclear. Unfortunately, this is a condition that is frequently experienced in relationships. There are many reasons why this imbalance occurs, but without going into all the various reasons, we offer you a solution. The essence of our solution is that in relationship with humans, strive to be more direct, more honest, and more truthful with yourself about your needs and desires, and then communicate these more clearly to others. Many teachers on earth and from the higher realms have spoken about the importance of relationships for thousands of years. We simply join with them in emphasizing this truth. When you can incorporate the second corner of the four based points of your ascension pyramid, the pyramid becomes more secure and solid. It becomes a support that allows you one more level of reaching up towards the top of the pyramid to higher states of awareness and consciousness. The third base point of the pyramid has to do with how you spend your time on earth, your work in the world, and your service to others. For most people, this point ba base is their career, although not always exclusively so. It it may be other things you do as well. It is how you engage the world, how you meet the world, and what you give the world in terms of your energy, your focus, and your service. Your work or service is how you express your true self. Work is love made manifest. And this is what I think we're getting back to, guys, because when I read that, I see that as your dharma. Like, what is your dharma? Not necessarily like how much money you're going to put in the bank by being an accountant, but like, what is it? Like, my dharma obviously is to teach spirituality because that's what I've been doing for most of my life now. I understand the philosophy and I think I'm a pretty good teacher. My courses sell out all the time, but I feel like that is, and it fulfills me. It's not just the monetary gain I make from doing a job, but it fulfills me too as a human being. I hope that makes sense. And so if you're working in a career where you don't feel like you're spiritually fulfilled, start to think about that. What can you do in your life to spiritually fulfill what your purpose is in the greater whole of the world? Yes, your micro, your individual person purpose is to return your is for your soul to know itself to return itself back to god but in the macro you also have service to provide others as well especially in a fourth density positive planet on a fourth density negative planet it's all service to self but we know that the negative planets don't go higher than fourth density because they implode on themselves yeah right so let's read that again work is love made manifest the work that you engage in is a way for you to manifest your love, your awareness, your consciousness, and your mastery. It reflects back to your personal expression and places in you that are not clear. The places in yourself where you are muddled or chaotic. 
So if you find yourself unfulfilled by your work, unfulfilled by the way in which you are engaging the world through expressing your creativity and love, then we suggest that you look to those places in yourself where you are unclear about your intentions in that realm. The problem is not the, is not with work. The problem is how one engages or resists engaging the world through the energy uses called work or service. The fourth and final base point of the pyramid is your conscious relationship to the elements. The four sacred elements that make up the earth are earth, fire, water, and air space. We are speaking here of the elements in terms of their subtle state as metaphor, not of the elements you understand them in chemistry. These sacred elements are actually great conscious beings, which may be a new understanding for some people. The element of air that moves around you and through your body is consciousness, the ether. The air that you breathe, the space that you move through is a conscious being. The earth element that supports you and composes your body is conscious. The water element of earth, the water that moves through the sky in the form of clouds and the water of your bodies are conscious. The fire element is conscious as well. What has happened at this plane of existence is truly a miracle. For these four beings, these vast beings of earth, fire, water, air, space, have joined together to allow you to have a physical bodily form. It is a gift that is given freely so you might have the benefit of experience in a denser world that, than from where you come. Without these conscious beings, work, and mutual cooperation under the creative desire for your existence here, there would be no evolution possible on this three-dimensional plane. In fact, there wouldn't be a physical plane at all. Forming a relationship of gratitude towards these beings to create a more cosmic and universal understanding within you. And when you possess this understanding, you do not abuse the world you live in, for you recognize the sacredness of these beings that allow your world to exist. It is out of their compassion, their love, and their service that you are able to evolve. For they, like all beings, have the four base pyramid of balance in themselves. Their work and their service is to provide a continuity of existence in this realm so that the elements are balanced and the physical world continues. That is their work, their service, their devotion, and their dedication. They evolve through this service to you and to all other kingdoms in this realm and this dimension. Humans are generally disconnected from the ancient understandings of the sacredness of these element elements and the sacredness of the earth. Your indigenous peoples are the ones who still hold this knowledge in their tribal understanding, but for the most part, the modern technologies-oriented human has been separated from this tr truth. As a result of this, many people are searching for a sense of peace, but they are agitated because they not cannot find a place to be in the world. Modern humans have become technologically ornated and continue to create new technologies, ever hoping that these new advances will give them peace and the sense of having a place in the world, yet it does not happen. The irony and tragedy of this is that the place of rest is here right now. It surrounds you. It compromises the elements of your body if you will but see and feel the sacredness of the earth and your body you will find peace and that sense of having a place in the world there are many methods that allow you to bypass the four cornerstones of the pyramid and move very rapidly to higher states of consciousness and awareness however you cannot sustain them until a secure foundation is formed if you do not build a foundation you will fall back into the lower frequencies and states of awareness Without the necessary foundation, higher states of consciousness cannot be maintained. Since our wish is to assist you to move upward in a way that is balanced and permanent, we recommend that it is best to diligently attend the four foundation points of your life. Attending to these four foundation points, one, nurture and strengthen your physical body. So exercise, nurture it, strengthen the physical body. Two, be aware of your own truth. Cultivate truthfulness with others. Three, deepen and enrich your relationship to your work as well as the opportunity for service. And four, strengthen your conscious relationship to the sacred elements that comprise your physical body and the entire earth plane reality. As you strengthen and track these four areas, acknowledge them every day, be consciously aware of them and doing your best to make each of them strong, you will secure the necessary energy that will facilitate a secure foundation upon which you can safely move upward into higher realms of consciousness. Chapter 6, The Ascending Spiral 
The ascending spiral is a term we use to describe the process of consciously moving upward in consciousness. As you begin this process of moving upward along the spiral, your body, your relationship, and your ways of service are all elevated. Even the elements that compromise your physical body are elevated. In our understanding, everything is elevated, not just your mind. As you begin to move upward, you can mark your own progress based on observation of the changes occurring in your four cornerstones of relationship. Your relationship to your body, your relationship with yourself and others, your relationship to work and service, and finally, your relationship to the sacred elements. Your relationship to others is especially helpful as a barometer of your progress. Ask yourself, what is happening in my realm of relationship? Are they truthful and meaningful? The elevation and clarity of, of your relationship will tell you in a very obvious and direct manner where you are along the spiral. If you feel, for instance, that you are very evolved and yet your relationships are difficult and a source of trouble and disharmony, then you can be assured that you are deluded about your level of evolution. Let me read that again. If you feel, for instance, that you are very evolved and yet your relationships are difficult and a source of trouble and disharmony, then you can be assured that you are deluded about your level of evolution. We have noticed that there are some humans who enter into what they call the ascension process and then proceed to cut themselves off from personal relationships and the learning opportunities that they offer. These persons have deprived themselves of a powerful mira and the most powerful feedback process. This type of feedback tells them if they are ascending are simply deluding themselves. There's a lot of delusion in the spiritual side of this quote-unquote truther, truther community. A lot. There is a great da danger of self-delusion in the process of ascension. Self-delusion can actually increase on the path of ascension due to the spiritual ego. As you transverse the upward spiral, there will be an increase in your abilities and powers. If unchecked, your spiritual ego tends to become smug and self-inflated. This lack of discernment and humility is dangerous because you will fall from the elevated states of awareness if you look at others with disdain and separation. So the spiritual ego can be a very real problem that emerges as you start the process of moving upward. And this is why relationships are so also such an important part of the process. In ancient Egypt, people who were not psych psychologically or socially balanced would not be admitted to the mystery schools. This was a wise decision because it was and still is too dangerous to activate higher energies without having the necessary clarity and stability. To understand the ascending spiral concept more easily, picture a pyramid of balance with a square base having four base points and a pinnacle at the top. Now picture a spiral starting at the base point and moving upward to the pinnacle. In point of fact, the spiral can move upward from any one or all four of the base points. You can, for, ins for instance, enter the spiral process by clarifying cultivating positive relationships with others. You can enter the ascending spiral through your highest vision of service. You can also enter the spiral by cultivating your own life force. And you can rise up the spiral by clarifying your relationship to the sacred elements of earth, fire, water, and air space. You have four possible spirals, then that can move independently of or together, and of course together is the most powerful of all. If you utilize the powerful synergy of the four spiraling moving upward simultaneously, enormous growth is, in consciousness is possible. The spiral of ascension extends upward to infinity, and there is no limit to the heights you can reach. However, the rate of consciousness the rate of conscious advancement using those four aspects within the spiral at any giving, given time would be would ideally be balanced. Let's say that you wish to move upward in a spiral balance. How would you do that? You would do that by reaching the same level of consciousness and capability in all four areas simultaneously, omitting none of them. If you elevate your ka, you elevate your relationships, you elevate your work, and you elevate the sacred elements. Your foundation has moved up in your imbalance. But if you have developed three of your cornerstones while neglecting your relationships, you will have a mess on your hands. Because what should have been balanced plane of stability is now tilted dangerously in one sector. That makes sense to me. Hope that makes sense to you guys. It's like a four-legged table. When one or two are not balanced with the others, it's wobbly, right? 
Consequently, when the spiral starts to move up, it cannot go any higher because the foundation on that corner of the pyramid is not there. It's missing. It is best to elevate all four possible positions it is best to elevate all four positions of the pyramid simultaneously so your growth can be stable. Choose the highest possibility in each of these four cornerstones. When you interact with another human, come from the highest vision of what is possible. In your relationship with your own life force, accept the reality of whatever is happening and work to improve it. If, for instance, you are striving to achieve the highest personal energy and health, then you must act in a way to try to bring that possibility into existence by making the right lifestyle choices. Continually work to re-envision your service to the world so that it is the highest expression of what you are capable. And finally, continue to elevate your awareness of the four sacred elements so that you are grounded in the physicality of your life. By surrendering to the highest possibility in each of the corners of the pyramid, all four areas of your life become harmonious. If properly att attended to, the intention of the highest possibility will balance out the four foundation areas of your life, allowing your frequency shift to occur in balance. Reflecting on and choosing to grow in these four areas of life is very different from what many humans normally do, however. The process of moving up the spiral of ascension takes energy. It is far easier to simply be in lethargy and unconsciousness, which is the state and a continuing choice of many humans. So if you're being lazy, you're not doing any exercises, but you think you're spiritual, they're calling you out right here and saying, no, you're deluding yourself. Get out there, sweat, get into the world, and then start the ascension process. It takes energy to move the spiral into the higher realms. We know there are some people who say that the path to higher states of consciousness is very easy and it doesn't really take any work, only thought. However, we would say in our experience over a millennial that that is not true. It does take effort. Now there is a grace along the way that helps, but it still takes effort to move through the place that the places that do not wish to change and grow. What allows you to have the energy to move upward is your cough. Only with a strong call and an ample life force will you have the power and the strength to clear your thoughts and balance your emotions. You need energy to successfully interact with someone or you will not even have the possibility of surrendering to the highest vision of that relationship. In fact, without sufficient life force, you will be so depleted that you can barely interact at all. That is why we started with and why we keep reinforcing this basic concept. You must build your call. You must build your life force.